Okay, my Nagas. Okay, my Nagas. Hey, let's do a map test. I'm not even going to tell you where this is at. <laughs> Some of y'all like, man, drop man, say it right there, man. All right, man, fine, man. This is a map of the moon, man. This is a map of the moon in 1647 by Avelius. And, you know, a lot of Nagas talking about this moon. You know, we've been talking plasma moons and we didn't show you scientists talking about the moon as a plasma, you know, a billion times. And, you know, you know, I'm just falling back. Hey, man, you know, excuse me. Excuse my uh, manners, man. You know, Shabbat Shalom to my knockers, man. I'm just falling way back. Got the kitties to bed. I got some maps up. Just enjoying, you know, just enjoying the week of recon. You know, this is when I just fall back and just see what's in here, man. And, yeah. Yeah. I want y'all to uh, see this with your uh, <laughs> with your third eye, man. You know, Hyperborea. A lot of these places is gonna remind you of home. Is all I'm saying. And I know, you know, I know what some would say. Yeah, maybe they just rename this moon stuff after stuff on Earth. Right, right, right. Or, or. <laughs> There's a lot to do with this Orient, you know, that meets the eye. What are we really looking at here, man? Are we just looking at a moon filled with nothing and craters and nothing? Are we? I'm seeing a bunch of mar, mar, mar business. Don't that mean water? And then they've been saying there's water on the moon. But here's the perplexing part. Scroll on over here. I'm just going to let it sit here. Africa. What in the world is Africa doing on the map of the moon? Naga, this is a Havelius map of the moon in 1647. And in 1647, you telling me with their super 1647 technology, these scientists made a map of the moon and included Libya? They mapped it out this detailed in 1647. Africa? Monaga, this is before the man on the moon. This is before the Apollo. This is before NASA. You dig? These are just scientists with their telescopes, right? <laughs> Come on, man. I see Africa. I see Libya. I'm resting, man. It's the Shabbat. I ain't going to go crazy, man. You know, I see some curly head. Uh, <laughs> little Naga babies. Ain't <laughs> no. <laughs> little Naga baby got his, uh, <laughs> got his compass, man. You know, look like he's doing some masonry work. Oh, we got Arabia. Got it. So we got Africa, Libya, Arabia. Let's go around this thing. We got Scythia, my naga. Yeah, you know the Amazon Scythia connection. You got Persia. This is a map of the moon, my naga. We about to get into some plasma moon drop, and I'm gonna let my Aqua Charmaine pop it off. She over there in the drop drop chatter, chat to chat chatter, popping off right now, man. Hey, Shabbat Shalom. And make sure y'all tune in for that Shabbat show 2.0, man, every Saturday night right after Shabbat. Yeah, man, we're just going to drop it like it's hot. We got Persia. And you got a lot of stuff in between, right? You got a lot of mountain ranges. It's not just craters. It's, look at all these mountains, man. I mean, don't y'all know, you know, that mountains hide a lot of things. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. What is this, man? What is this, man? What are all these rivers and Mars doing, right? Mars on Mars. What's all this Mars business? 
Not only do you got Africa, but you got Tavrica <laughs> over here. Pontus, Propontus, Propontus. You got Sarmatia, Sarmatia, Europia. Oh, damn. You got Europe, Managa. You got Europe, man. So, you know, it's <laughs> a lot going on here, right? What are they mapping out the moon so detailed for in 1647? Hyperborium, you know, all this is on your maps like the Hyborian map, right? All this stuff connecting with the Earth. You got the Atlas Mountains and all this stuff, right? So, yeah. Okay. We're going to come back to this map. And this is a moon map of 1647. Romania. Oh, we about to talk some Romani. Romani. A Romani. Yeah, we're going to get back on that. We got some great docs that uh, I definitely want to dig on with the history of the pomegranate and the Holy Land connecting it all. But, you know, we just blasting off into the moon. Remember, the moon is a plasma. You know, we got some great straight up first hand, you know, recon of a scientist breaking that down. So he said nobody will ever land on this day. It's a plasma, meaning it's a reflection. So the, the real question is. If the moon is a plasma, <laughs> what's all this? What's all this? Right. And, you know, this next couple of drops, you know, that we're going to drop and just relax, man. It's the Shabbat on. Don't get too head heavy. I didn't come for this. You know, I just want to share some great recon by Aqua Charmaine popping off. And if the moon's a plasma, my naga, then this don't really exist, right? You can't land on it. These mountains, these rivers. So what is it? How? What are they mapping out? And how could they map it out so detailed if they've never been there? Unless, unless, unless they have. Unless they have. Unless what we're seeing right here is just a reflection of what's right here. <laughs> if the moon is a reflection and we're talking about the earth and, you know, you're talking about really, you know, not just Africa and Europe, but more areas that you never heard of. Yeah. If the moon is a plasma, then what are we looking at? You know, we're just talking reflections. Oh, you got Palestina, <laughs> Arabia. You got all this stuff. Is it just a reflection of Palestine? Is it just a reflection of of this Europe and this Scythia and this Africa? What is <laughs> all this mapped out? On the moon, man. Hey, shout out to Aqua Charmaine. Aqua Charmaine is popping off in the drop drop chatter, 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 chatter. Hey, hey, hop to you, Aqua. But your hop con drop, con D and the droplets. Hey, we popping off. Yeah. It's all happening, Aqua. Hey, ha, let go. Hey, I'm talking Aqua Shar, man. Who else is up in here, man? Oh, I think I see the tent. Oh, the Templar is it? Oh, you know if the Templar is in the building. Oh yeah, he's doing the uh, declaration. One drop, you know what I'm saying? Free Phineas, choose up Suda with all the members of Nagaville. He's in the prayer time. He got the fire burning. Allah, Hawa, blue, purple, red. White linen go thread. Charmaine and Templar, man. And they enjoying the Shibata show. <laughs> Replay. He got the towels rocking the Shikamagua. Oh, man. Oh, we got 7-7 seven, seven Showtime. That's the sister Abiyan. She popping off. The water dropping steady growth. Dodging hijacks. That's what I'm talking about. You got maps on maps on the hijack. Yeah, because we was dropping some maps, right? This is the biblical astronomy world map. We're about to get this in a great uh, video for the dismount as well. Managa, we can't make this stuff up. This ain't no new thing, no new sign. This, 
this is already happening. You're going to have to explain why Antarctica is surrounding everything. You, you got to explain this Terra Fuego that's connected right here at the south, uh, you know, the tip of South America. You're going to have to explain why South America looks more like it's north than south. Then you're going to have to explain <laughs> which way is south. Because according to Satanic Astronomy 1865, Samuel Rothbotham, south is everywhere out. When you stop going up and down for north and south and you start going straight, then the north becomes the magnetic center and the south becomes everything away from it. And east and west become counterclockwise and clockwise. Now you're oriented, my naga. So if the south ice is everywhere, <laughs> yeah. Then we ask, you know, which way south, right? Antarctica's everywhere. South is everywhere outside of our magnetic north. And if you have more geothermic, you know, um, holes in the ice, you know, more earth ponds, then that magnetic north would be, you know, different for every single earth pond. This would be earth pond one. You could have another earth pond and another one and another one and another one, right? But this south sure looks like it's north. Yeah, okay. The south is everywhere. Yeah, you got rings on rings on rings. You got rings and things. Get this bigger. Yeah, my naga. You know, you get out of this ring. Yeah, you get into another world, another realm. More worlds, more suns, more moons. You get out of that ring, you get into more land, more moons. And then you know what, man? You know what, man? You get out of that. You get out of that outer ring. And you come up on another ring. Now, they didn't even go as far as to tell you what's out of there. Use your imagination, my God. Talking about more worlds beyond the poles. You know, we ain't just talking about it. We're putting it in, you know, the investigation has to continue. You can't, you know, fill your cup up. Well, you can do what you want to do. But when you do that, you're already lost. And we already won because we're investigating. And once we say we're investigating, you're going to have to get the hell up out our way and let us investigate. Like this. Like this. Right. You got Thoth the Moving Island, South America. Bing, there's a gateway. Bow, there's another sun. More land. You get out of here, just like there. Right. You get out of here. That first ring, let's count the rings. One, two, three, right? So that's one. That's two. There's a third one, right? Right? One, two, three. So very few would actually show that third ring, which is very interesting because that has gateways of its own, just like the rings in between. You get out of that ring, oh boy. So it's time different. I mean, if, if New York and County got three hours apart, then are we talking about going into the past and into the future as you go further out in these rings? And who's thought the moving island? And what's the Deception Island about in that article? These are just questions. And why do they call the moon Yah? And why do you call the creator Yah? Whew, yeah, I might want to stay away from that. Mana. <laughs> hey, man. These are great maps. They're all in the drop, drop, chatter, chat, 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 chat. Another one showing that south is everywhere. South is everywhere. You Every direction you go, <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, you hop in that water, you start going away from the magnetic north, you're going south. To go east and west, you got to go clockwise or counterclockwise. This is real orientation. And north would be the center. We're talking like tree of life, magnetic mountain type of flow. You know what I'm saying? All the compasses point north, which means they're pointing to the center. That's why north changes, you know. Depending on your orientation, 
We just keeping it real, man. I, look, man. Oh, yeah. That's the beautiful moon map we just got again. If the moon is a plasma, then what in the world are we looking at? What map is it? What What is it reflecting? We're going to talk some reflection drop. Love to Aqua Charmaine. 777 popping off. Oh, we got the bread. Cootie Mayo. A hop to the bro. He's showing A hop. We did it again. Couldn't have done it without Drop Nation, man. A hey, Drop Nation. You've inspired one of the greatest reconners of all time, man. Cootie Mayo, man. And we're going to give you your flowers right now, Con. You're doing amazing work. You're building, you're growing. And it's becoming simplified. You know, that people are able to really latch on more and more as the spell gets broke. But you're doing an amazing work to break the spell. You're continuing to recon in all these directions. No one can do all the recon. I can't do it. I got my own investigation. You know what I'm saying? So what you've done is pick it up, man, and continue the investigation in so many, you know, uh, variations. You know what I'm saying? So many directions. It's beautiful. So we love you, Kuri Mayo, the water for checking in and the water for giving the AI I've always back to Drop Nation, man. Hey, Zion Train, my bread, true to life supporter. You know, gold dragon on the wall. You know what I'm saying? True supporter of the Ether Squad. You know what I mean? So ZT's in the building. It's always a good day when Zion's in the building. A hop to your family, Zion Train. A hop to all your loved ones and the real ones around you, man. Keep it on cool, man. And we just checking in the drop chatter because you checking in the drop chatter, man. Zion Train not just checking in. He dropping <laughs> that drop. This that drop, you know, connecting some of the Marco Polo connection you know the Preston John connection John the priest who was the king of a uh, dodge to hijack Christian people uh, Nestorian you know the the Nestors those people he had not seen apparently they were a tribe of Nestorian see I didn't have to the next line told you Nestorian oh drive why you keep putting Nestorian in there because they're Nestorian Tartars they're saying right which means they're not Christian because Nestorian means that you're connected to what? An old king renowned for wisdom. Wisdom is who? Ama. So these people are connected with the framer, the shaper. Christians are connected with Jesus. <laughs> nah, that's a different energy, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, Cathay, Catan, Car, Catan, Amanzi, the great Khan. It's all happening. It's all happening. Don't don't get me started, Zion, man. We're about to get into Preston John 70, 71, 72. Which one we at, man? We, we out of here, man. It's all happening. Goody, man. Oh, the cool says in the building. Hey, man. Y'all check in the drop chat. We're just dropping maps on maps on maps. Keeping it real. All right, Aqua Charmaine, let's go. She dropped some plasma moon drop. I want to connect this with, you know, get the drop before. Just... Just, you know, just, just go in our archives, man. We got some great drop, three-hour-long drops. We got series on this, Plasma Moon. We showed the scientists breaking it down, saying no one would be able to land on the moon because it's a plasma. And if it's a plasma, it's only reflecting. But you see more than meets the eye. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about this, man. Let's go. A hey, shout-out to Broadway Mac on IG. I'm going to give you a follow, man. You're doing great work. Let's go, man. He said this is a six-hour series. The moon is some type of phosphorescent concentrated plasma. So the plasma theory is kicking off now. You know, we're just investigating. Get out of our way. And not a solid object, but a light since it is formed in the level of altitude where the gas krypton is present. Oh, like, like Superman krypton? Krypton is known for its phosphor phosphorescent white light and used to create non-thermal or cold plasma. Oh boy, it's getting heavy. It's getting heavy, heavy up in here. Let's go, man. Let's pop up. Stumbled through thick overgrowth and out into a moonlit clearing with a small lake. At this clearing, I met a mysterious figure named Sturgios. I told him I was lost <laughs> and he told me to come and look into the lake. Hey. <laughs> Just bear with it, man. It gets better, man. I know. Sturgill's, what, what the hell drop, man? We're just talking about the moon, plasma, and a map. All right, follow. Just, just follow me now. Let's go. He told me to watch the water. What did I see, he asked. Myself, I replied. 
my reflection rippling and glistening in the moonlight. Mirror, mirror, look beyond yourself, he said. What do you see? And there it was, just as it had always been. Mirror, mirror, way up high. Mirror, mirror, in the sky. Mirror, mirror, oh how they lie. Okay, okay, you know, Ooh, <laughs> wait. I saw more tanny. I mean, my naga, this is way. Let's back it up. Let's back it up, right? I just dropped a moon map, right? Con con, it's the Shabbat, con con. Count the seven in your rest, con con. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'll drop. I follow the moon. <laughs> okay, you follow the moon cycles. Got you. You're, you're on the lunar flow. Right, right. So when I was talking about new moons and all the flow, as aware individuals, these are the questions we're asking, right? So what is a new moon? Are we dealing with the same plasma energy that Hawa, you know what I'm saying, was referring to then? Has this energy been hijacked? Has it been replaced? You know, the moon's acting real funny these days, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, is this the same moon that our ancestors had? Is it the same sun our ancestors had? We're, are we in the matrix, my not? <laughs> what are we talking about? If you can't land on this thing, if it's a reflection, if it's a mirror, mirror on the wall, what's all this stuff we see, right? Managa. What are we looking at? Look at, I mean, for this to be whatever millions or hundreds of thousands, whatever far distance they want to put this thing, and they got this much detail. In 1647, you know what was going on in 1647, man? Should I bring up all, all the wars that, that's going on, the Indian Wars popping up? They didn't go here, right? You saying their telescope was just fucking just on point? Like, it was just picking off all these details? If that's the case, then they should be able to, you know, use that same telescope and map out the Amazon, like everything, right? <laughs> all this unknown areas that we have. What about all the water, man? Like all the stuff in the water, we use that same damn telescope and just point it inside the water so we can get a map of all the oceans, if, if that's the case. <laughs> or is this just a reflection and showing us more than meets the eye? Another Europe. <sighs> Reflections of the same. Another Africa. Another Scythia. Another Libya. Another Arabia. You know, obviously none of this is drawn to, you know, whatever scale, but we've, you know, you're just talking about reflections and, you know what I'm saying? This could be. <sighs> I mean, it just opens the door, you know, for your perspective to pop off. And just ask, what are you looking at? Don't be afraid to ask, what am I looking at? And am I possibly looking at more land, you know what I'm saying, than fits on the ball? A reflection of more land than fits 
on their ball, man. Is it possible? Mirror, mirror. Look beyond yourself, he said. What in the sky? Mirror, mirror. Oh, how they lie. It's just a moon. It's just a moon, right? Think of mirror, right? Man, I know, I know. It might be hard. It, it might be hard to see. This is new to me. But what if it's true? Now you're finding and seeing more land. You see how they got these circles, you know, almost like the Antarctica flow, you know what I mean? <sighs> Terra Vista. So you got Tara Fuego, you got Tara Sock, and now you got Tara Vista. What's all this, man? What is all this? You know, back to our maps, we see all that extra land. Are we just looking at a map of extended worlds? Let's go. <laughs> so you just zoom right in. <laughs> he went right into what Africa he's in the Sahara Nigeria Saudi Arabia dang This is what it is. He's not drawing this. <laughs> He's just literally showing you the reflection of what's going on. Again, back it up. This is already on the moon. This is not a drawing, my nigga. This is already on the moon. <laughs> Man, so would all this be reflections of water? The water? Is that where the, the water's flowing? Is this all the white area of the water? Let's go. Seeing is believing, huh? You gotta open your third eye on this one, my nun. Alright, so pay attention to the land masses from here. So this is the area you're zooming in on. He didn't change nothing, man. Okay? I just want you to see that clearly. He didn't switch it up on you. You just seen the reflection from the moon. What is the moon? Can you land on it? Yeah, man. I mean, it's detailed, reflected to a T. You see where they got the Indian Ocean and over there they had the Atlantic flow. And that's what the circles are pretty much encompassing. And then you got more water, <laughs> more of that mem sauce.
And I don't think this is no complete map because you still see more land even on the borders. So there's still stuff that the moon can't even reflect to. You got the Americas, pin, pinpoint, reflected with accuracy. They have lied to us, my love. Did they land on the moon? Did they land on the moon? Is the moon a map hidden in plain sight this whole time? We staring up like, what is this? A space rock? <laughs> then you learn that it got its own light. Okay. It has its own light. Now we try to, you know, factor in this Enoch flow. I mean, we, we got to, you know, we got to be willing to investigate it all, right? So. You know, a lesser luminary, the same size as the sun, 32 miles, all the stuff that we learn. Okay. Let's try to, you know, see how these investigations play. You know what I'm saying? Is the sun a disk that's 32 miles in diameter? Is it a plasma, you know, reflection that is 32 miles in diameter? You know, the same size as the plasma sun. No one's trying to land on the sun. Oh, it's too high. But the moon, according to the Book of Enoch, you know, is a seventh of the of the light source, which I mean, a seventh of the sun would still be hot as a mug. I mean, how do you still land on a seventh of the sun with its own light source? How do you land on something <laughs> that's, that's that's popping off its own situation? Right. But you're talking plasma. Yeah. See, they thought they can fool us and just land on some space rock moon and this this rock is supposed to be reflecting the light from the sun it's not supposed to be its own light source but then you prove through doing moon tests and moon experiments light experiments that you could leave out a thermometer in the in the moonlight and then you could put one in the moon shade right you can hide it from the moonlight and that the that thermometer that's in the moon shade is going to be a certain amount of degrees warmer than the moon, the thermometer in the moonlight, which means that the principle, the property of this light of the moon is the exact opposite as that of the sun. In the moon, it cools the surface of stuff. In the sun, it warms the surface of things. Something in the moonlight is going to get cooler than something in the moon shade or something in the sun. So you can't have a reflection from the sun and flip the property of light the properties will still be the same it's like taking um, a reflector and i'm beaming the sun reflection on you it's still gonna be hot as hell because i'm reflecting the sun the moon has to keep that same energy <laughs> it can't switch its energy to cooling surfaces i can't give you a, a reflection of the sun and it makes you cold so whatever that light source is this cooling plasma that cools the surface instead of warming it up. It's the opposite property. So once you get that in your head, Bo, you're like, whoa, okay. It's not reflecting the sun. It's its own light source. And they're supposed to be landing on it? And we we see these pictures with like this plain little rock. Like how when it's reflecting so much light or giving off its own light, how do you have all these pictures on the surface of the moon? As if it's not giving off its own super light, even if it is a seventh of the sun, it's still super duper superior light, man. How do you land on this light source? We never ask those questions because we never put it all together. We never put the fact that it has the opposite property of the sun with the plasma moon situation 
with the moon maps and the reflection situation. This is even new and groundbreaking for the flat drop period. And we've been doing flat drop for years. But we never put the plasma moon, you know, with this light property situation. And then connected it with these moon maps. And so much more. So much more connection, man. I mean, is it a map that's been in hidden in plain sight the whole damn time? Oh, wow. Wow. It all adds up. The math adds up, my nugget. This ain't no play play. How deep is Antarctica, though? So then the sun, our sun, would only be, you know, monitoring or giving light to this particular area. That's why on those other maps you have more suns and more moons as you get out, <laughs> get out of this world, right? <laughs> get out of these gateways, man. Hey, love the Aqua Charmaine. This is, you know, truly uh, groundbreaking because, you know, we can't get enough of it, of the investigation. It must continue. You can't bottle up, bottle yourself up and put a cap on it. The minute you put a cap on that bottle, you lost, man. So we're continuing, continuing the orientation. They put how many hundreds of years into deceiving us? So it's going to take more than a few years for you to pop off and become, you know, aware out of that spell. You had a, a globe in your classroom since you were kindergarten. It's going to take time, man. Be patient and just open your mind and surf the way. Yeah, man. Yeah. Reflections. Reflections. That's why they had to invert it because it's reflected. Wow. I love again to Broadway Mac. Man, we're just talking reflections, reflections, reflections. So, with that in mind, what is this Persia? In Scythia, in Europe, Europia. What is it? What is Europia over here? What is the hyperb and hyperborean, hyperborean? What is Africa popping off over here for? What are all these rivers for? All these mountain ranges on a plasma, on a plasma. This joint's in a perfect circle. Look at this. What's that supposed to be, huh? Neptune is, huh? Huh? What's Neptune popping up for? <laughs> What's all this reflection going on? Yeah, we're just talking about the moon. Asking you a couple questions about the moon. You know what I'm saying? And, yo, man, <laughs> we over here in the flat pack enjoying it. You know, we got Antarctica with no ice. This is out the uh, flat pack one on one, man. Everybody got their flat drop. You know, this is a USB drive full of flat earth information. After Shabbat, check it out. Hit me up, music at 432thedrop.com. We got this 1972 flat earth, the whole archives, man, of all those, um, you know, uh, what were they? Uh, what do you call them? Uh, not the steels. My man Sibs did all these cuts to it. Not cuts, but um, oh, filters. Yeah, he put all the filters up so you could really see this particular shot of what appears to be another Earth pond beyond beyond the plane. Right? I got your map pack up in here. Flat Earth Conspiracy, Eric Dubay, a bunch of books, man. So when you click on these books and all that, you know, it, it comes up bang, bow. You get the drop and you get. To see all the, you know, not at all, but if, you know, a lot of the documents that we come across along the way right here in your, you know, book session, 
section, PDF section. You know, you got the Flat Earth Bible that has so many scripts and Enoch and all that. You got documents from NASA, flat, stationary, fixed surface. All their, you know, <laughs> all their flying machines are calibrated to a flat, stationary, fixed surface, according to them. So if you're not even calibrated to fly on a spinning ball, <laughs> you're calibrated for a flat, stationary surface. Maybe NASA knows something, right? But yeah, you got that thousand year old Japanese map. Got a lot of drop, man. A lot of drop, man. A lot of drop that we've accumulated. And this is all on your flat pack, flat drop, ether band. Oh man, got the etymology. So, you know, we're gonna start doing this more and more, just pretty much coming right out the ether packs and the ether bands, and, you know, just dropping it. And these will all continue, man. The investigations continue. Oh, 1965 scientist says the moon is a planet. Man, I can't make this up. I wasn't even looking for this. But when you're searching in your ether band, who knows what you are going to find? Hey, this is brought to you by your flat pack ether band. So we're talking plasma moons, we're talking reflections, and I guess the ether band. <laughs> Got a mind of his own. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll just get a couple minutes of this. We've, we've seen this a few times. Let's get it from here. Uh, I have been deeply inter interested from early youth in the real nature of the world, and I held my own views and ideas. But uh, many years ago, about 14 years ago, when I was challenging one of the fundamental conventional principles of science, I had a definite inspiration, not knowledge as such, but uh, an indication and a guidance which I followed on which I worked very hard and to evolve into a new structure of understanding. Inspirations are related to thoughts of genius. Do you think or consider yourself to be a genius? No. I um, consider myself to be an ordinary, humble person who wants to serve mankind with what we, man has striven for from the beginning of consciousness with truth. He should have just said, yeah, nigga, I am a genius. <laughs> An understanding of the world. Well, now, one thing, you have a theory about the moon, and that we expect to be able to get observable facts about the moon fairly soon. Uh oh um, What is your theory? Well, uh, it is by now rather more than a theory. Uh, 10 or 11 years ago, I stated to various scientists that the moon is not a piece of rock, but it is a uh, plasma plasma phenomena, cosmic plasma, uh, and that this fact will eventually be confirmed. I made certain predictions which were already confirmed in 1958, and the situation now is coming close to a complete confirmation. What? Complete confirmation in 1965. This is 2021, man. Be back on course. I mean, I Broadway Mac just told you, we're talking phosphorescent, concentrated plasma where where's he getting it from it was already confirmed over 60 years ago what we, man has striven for from the beginning of consciousness you can't make this stuff up an understanding of the world well, now one thing you have a theory about the moon and that we expect to be able to get observable facts about the moon fairly soon um what is your theory well, uh, it is by now rather more than a theory. Uh, 10 or 11 years ago, I stated to various scientists that the moon is not a piece of rock, but it is a plasma, a plasma phenomena, cosmic plasma, uh, and that this fact will eventually be confirmed. I made certain predictions which were already confirmed in 1958, and the situation now is coming close to a complete confirmation. What will be the result if you're proved to be correct in your theories? The result will be uh, profound and decisive because it will give proof that a complete re reinvestigation of the laws of nature is necessary. Because if the moon is a plasma, no man will ever land on it. The soft ah. landing attempts will all fail. <laughs> that means that the mass of the moon is less, far less, than is currently assumed. It's in a different state of energy and it has far less mass. That means... A different state of energy, Be like, back, of course. like concentrated phosphorescent, <laughs> phosphorescent plasma. It is not a object, but a light since it is formed in the level of altitude where the gas krypton is present. 
Krypton is known for its phosphorescent white light and used to create non-thermal or cold plasma. Why does the moonlight cool the surface of objects? Hey, man, Broadway is popping off. Why does the moonlight cool the surface and the sunlight heat the surface? If it was a reflection of a heating light, it will also be heating you up, right? If it was reflecting a hot sun, the moon light property would be heat. It would be hot. It wouldn't be cold. It wouldn't cool you off like it's some refrigerators shining in the sky unless you're talking cold plasma. And if you're talking a separate light and a separate property, right now we're connecting the Book of Enoch. Now we're getting you know, into the fruitful conversation, the fruitful investigation, which means that it's bearing seeds which are growing into trees, plasma trees. <laughs> it's popping off, man. All right, we're talking cold plasma, non-thermal? What's this scientist talking about? There is no more explanation for the tides. If the moon, for example, had only a thousandth part of its current mass, and the tides would only be two inches high, and the conventional theories instead of sometimes 14 feet. And that means that if it is proved that the moon is a plasma, then all gravitational theories are out, and the new concept of the cosmos and of its laws has to be. And if all gravitational theories are out, then the theory of gravity is out. Say it with me. If all gravitational theories are out, then the theory of gravity is also out. Say it with me. Break the spell with me, my nine. Repetition breaks the spell. If all gravitational theories are out, then the theory of gravity is out. And without no uh, God of gravity, there is no ball earth because you need the gravity to crush the water. You need the gravity so they can blame the fact that you don't feel all that thousand mile per hour spinning and 67 thousand per hour wobbling. You don't feel no movement or all this whirling and dashing. Take all this all this time you thinking you're gonna run into something. All oh, the earth is spinning and wobbling, sixty seven thousand miles per hour, flying through space. We're spinning at it. You're thinking, man, it's only a matter of time for we we're gonna run into some shit. <laughs> like we just going at sixty seven thousand miles per hour in a giant spaceship. I'm going to sleep like damn man, like what if we run into something? <laughs> nah, man. You are firm, fixed, and immovable. You don't feel no movement because you ain't moving. You don't think Hawa gave you the senses to know if you're moving or not? They got to blame it on the God of gravity, but all gravitational theories are out. Sometimes 14 feet. And that means that if it is proof that the moon is a plasma, then all gravitational theories are out, and the new concept of the cosmos and of its laws has to be evolved. Bang. Aren't you being a bit adventurous, though, because uh, you know we're going to be able to test out your theories on the moon fairly soon. Well, not anymore. Eleven years ago, uh, <laughs> of course, uh, it was rather taking a risk. I was considered a lunatic, of course. But by now, the evidence, accumulated evidence, is already so much in my favor that I'm not taking any risks anymore. Bruh. You can't make this stuff up. He's like, man, there is no risk. What are you talking about? They'll never land on anything. It's impossible. To this to this guy, what they're saying is impossible. He's going against conventional science. He's going against their theories with his own theories. We don't have this anymore in science. Now it's the go along, get along gang. A hop to Kwame. Now they all got to agree, right? And we got to agree with all their stuff or else they start banning us, right? So it's the go along, get along game, man. You can't say no clearer than that. Because what happened to this, man? What happened to these theories? What happened to the explorers? We got we got astronauts now. We got SpaceX. That's called that's space exploration. What about actual Earth exploration? What about people going finding more land. They don't want you to do that because then they got to make their ball bigger and they don't want to make their ball no bigger. They don't want to add no more land to that ball. So they want to put you on a finite ball on a finite earth spinning for eternity. There ain't no explorers, man. There ain't nobody going out there showing you nothing new. There ain't nobody funding these people to go find something new. They're not trying to explore the oceans because they already know. They got something popping off. <laughs> so they're like, nah, let's let's just talk about SpaceX. 
They don't want to explore Earth at all. They don't want to show you about Moab, Utah. <laughs> they don't want to show you what's in Mount Nebo. They don't want to talk about the Grand Canyon. They want to talk space. You see what they're doing to you? They're fooling you. They're tricking you to get you thinking about some astronaut shit. When in reality, these explorers are the astronauts. These explorers like Admiral Byrd were the real astronauts. <laughs> real cosmonauts. Because they can reach the cosmos by going straight, man. By going straight, man. man Y'all better stop playing, man. <laughs> we got all the links on the flat drop, on the flat pack. They reach the cosmos by going straight, man. And what happens? According to 1972, Work Shield USA Archive, they find more worlds beyond the pole. This could be a big pond. This this could be a, a small pond, you know, but it's at least letting you know it's more to meet the eye. On the contrary, uh, there's scientific views expressed all over the world now that uh, the moon seems to be of a quite different nature of what was assumed. But and the, the Americans and Russians are thinking of landing men on it. Uh, well, that will never happen. Not on the moon. On Mars, on Venus, and other planets, yes. But the moon is definitely as I... Man. One more time, bro. The Americans and Russians are thinking of landing men on it. Uh, well, that will never happen. Not on the moon. On Mars, on Venus, and other planets, yes. But the moon is definitely as I assert the plasma. Damn. Isn't there a slight contradiction? You mentioned the, the moon and the tides, Mr. Foster. And at the earlier part of the interview, you talked about the tides sweeping over the Earth. Well, there is no contradiction there because once the moon is proven not to be a piece of rock but something of far less mass and the gravitational theories are out and discarded, wow. new concepts have to be involved which will show that the lawfulness of nature in the cosmos is identical to that in a hydrogen atom or in, uh, in, in atomic processes. And when this is understood and worked out in full, it will be found that the physical processes of the Earth are quite different in geophysics of what is this present assumed, and that lawfully in certain periods, mostly during the ice ages, which occur every 200 million years, and there is a reason for that, the axis of the Earth suddenly tilts over. And when this happens, then you get the floods of the Bible, which were recorded before. The tides, the ordinary everyday tides, tides have an explanation, even if the moon had almost no mass at all, because they are field effects. They are induced by cosmic pressures which exist in the field of our solar system. What's the benefit to mankind in your theories? Just right quick, I mean, he said a lot, but, you know, you can see he he's at where he's at. You know, he, he's, he still probably think he's on a ball, but he at least knows that this moon is a plasma, right? They say if anybody gonna land on it, he said that's never gonna happen. Now he's talking about the axes, you know, you can still factor in the axes and and this whole flip over, you know what I'm saying, when you just count in the magnetics, you know, the electromagnetic fields flipping and maybe that's what's causing what they're calling polar shifts, you know what I'm saying? But you're just talking about the mag the magnetism flipping. It's like the South Pole becomes the North Pole, the North becomes the South. But remember, when I say pole, you better get off that ball. I'm not talking that type of pole. We ain't talking that type of pole, right? <laughs> hey man, get up and get up in your flat pack, man. We, we ain't talking that type of pole, though. You know, let me just get back for a second, man. You, you know, we ain't talking that type of pole business around here, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah, there we go. That's what I want. That's what I need. That's what we want. That's what we need. We just talking some flat drop, man. I'm, I'm not getting too lanky around here, man. I just wanted to say, man, we ain't talking that type of Paul, right? <laughs> you feel me, my nut? You said, what's this? I'll show you a 
a zoomed out picture, you know, but this is some of the recon from 1920s out the book Worlds Beyond the Poles from F. Amadio Giannini showing that the poles are next to each other. This is not a ball with poles on one side and another side. These poles work like magnets, man. This is electromagnetism, right? Very similar to what? Polarity, right? Poles, polarity, north, south. Uh, negative, positive, polarity, whatever you want to call it in science. You're talking polarity, and it creates this energy, this movement, the water flow. Everything is in the flow of the polarity. When you factor in what it might actually be looking like, this is coming from a greater shot of the stratosphere shot. Any part of Earth's luminous outer sky, as proven in just an other it's just another star or planet. Any part of Earth's luminous outer sky, as proven, it's just another star or planet. Any part of the Earth's luminous outer sky. And what's the luminous outer sky? We're talking about, you know, the areas that's able to be, you know, seen or the atmospheric energy, you know what I'm saying, all connected with everything because according to this the land the sky everything's connected all stars or planets are just parts of the earth's outer sky you know or the connected sky this says connecting lands this is from the 20s also talking about this is from 1928 here this is 1947 1956 all right this ain't no play play this is repeatable observable science the u.s naval force flight all right this is actual factual History of exploration before you had astronauts, you had explorers. U.S. Naval Force Flight 2300 miles beyond the South Pole, January 13th, 1956. This is an illustration of what was documented, my name. By the U.S. Navy, 2,300 miles beyond what they would call the most southern point of your ball. Except it's not on the bottom of your ball. It's right next to the south, to the North Pole. And according to other researchers, they're right next to each other beneath South America. Which is why they had to hijack this place because this is where the true vortexes are. Because you have a vortex when you have polarity. Connecting land areas beyond North Pole. Beyond the North Pole. So they went to what they know as the North Pole. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody's still popping off in the drop chatter, man. We, we pop off all night long, all day long. Hey, you want to check us out? Come holler at us, man. Give some AHOP in the drop, drop chatter. Hit up 432thedrop.com. Password is 1234 to get through the door. All right, so look, to go to the North Pole, here's the North Pole. South Pole, here's the South Pole. They found connecting land area beyond the North Pole. Explored February 1947 by Admiral Richard E. Byrd, U.S. Navy. That was in 1947. Then about, what, nine years later, the Navy... <sighs> Goes 2,000 miles beyond that. That's like L.A. to Texas, damn near New York City. How much land did they find? How, how much more water? How many more islands? That was in 1956, my naga. How can you don't hear about this? This ain't no mythology. Don't let them brainwash you to where this don't make no sense. This is exploration. It's the only thing that makes sense. Connecting areas beyond South Pole discovered by... Hearst Wilkins, Antarctic Expedition, and Admiral Richard E. Byrd in December 1928. So they started finding more connected land areas in 1928. See how the North and South Pole are next to each other. We're talking polarity. This ain't a spinning ball. It's more like this, Managa. This is what is creating those tides he's talking about. And when he talks about Access the Earth's access is not about a ball, it's literally about 
these poles shifting, right? It's about these little areas These two little areas shifting, whether they literally shift or whether the energy or magnetism itself shifts, it switches everything up, right? It's not the ball flipping upside down, fool. <laughs> no, no, no. It's the shift in the pole. Well, there we go. There we go. Because that shifts the entire magnetic field when those two things, even though they're close to each other, they flip. Right? Just like a magnet. We're talking magnetism. We're talking stratospheric tests from the 1920s. More ice, more land, more water, land to sky, seven to ten miles, oxygen. Before you get into the stratosphere, which connects to all outer sky areas, which is just more land, water, and ice. And it's been connected, man. I mean, you got to meditate on stuff like this. You can't just discard it because that wasn't a popular opinion and it wasn't nobody trying to get rich. It was somebody really doing experimentation. And you got to get the book, Worlds Beyond the Pole. What does it say down here? This is the created universe as it exists on a physically connected plane with the earth where every area is endowed with identical earth attributes. So no matter what area stars, what area planets, it has the same earth attributes, the same sky, the same atmosphere. You don't go to Pluto or Jupiter and have a different atmosphere. It's the same atmosphere, my nugget. You don't got to wear no space suit. That's all. That's mythology. NASA is mythology. That's the boo, <laughs> the baloney. You know what I'm saying? That's the poo sandwich. This here is the minority report. This is what they don't ever want you to research. They don't want you to talk about the connected stratosphere. They don't want you to talk about the the connected created universe, the physically physically connected plane, not planet. You put a T at the end, now you got a ball. Where they do that at? Etymology, man. Plane is flat, spread out. Planet, well, that's when you get into uh, the hijacked city. You got to take that T off. You got to take that cross off. The T is the cross, and they put a cross. They put a T. They try to hijack with another cross, right, at the end of plane to get planet. <laughs> We're talking north and south poles beside each other. So, you know, we're we hearing it from him talking about the earth. And the access flipping, I mean, just think about that as he says how these things shift. And, you know, think about the stratosphere, my naga. Let's go. In the ice ages, which occurred every 200 million years, and there is a reason for that, the axis of the earth suddenly tilts over. And when this happens, then you get the floods of the Bible, which were recorded before. The tides, the ordinary, everyday tides, tides have an explanation even if the moon had almost no mass at all, because they are field effects. They are induced by cosmic pressures which exist in the field of our solar system. What's the benefit to mankind in your theories? Well, one, the first one, and the most important, I would briefly put down, is this. I think it is a new conception about the nature of the cosmic world and about the nature and the veracity of consciousness, conscience, of morality. At present, we have a glaring contradiction in the assertions of fundamental science. Scientists assert that they are completely uninhibited in their pursuit of truth, that they're completely uninhibited in their pronouncements, and that they produce for mankind, out of their knowledge or understanding, means which man can use according to his moral nature. So if the scientist produces a television set or uh, a jet car, jet motor car, or a hydrogen bomb, it is up to the common man then to use it in a manner which uh, he finds uh, according to his human nature. Yet, the very same processes of dialectics of science also declare that morality, concept of man's moral nature, is an illusion, that it is merely behaviorism or 
something due to conditioned reflexes or to herd instinct. And this, of course, is a contradiction which must be resolved and must, must go out. And it will be found as a consequence what I had the privilege to see and to experience in my mind, that there is a moral law in the universe on which we, in which we partake and which is binding on us and which is decisive on our future. Now, Wow. So when he's saying moral law, he's really saying, you know, the creator, real consciousness, you know, not science wants to play God, right? They want to say all the morals are just behaviorism, like you said. It's just a product of X, Y, and Z. It's kind of like the Matrix. When Neo's talking to the architect, you know, he's like, oh, man, those emotions are just, you know, you know, products of, you know, whatever program. You know, none, none of this stuff is real. None of your morals are real. Your God's not real. Nothing's real. And this is a scientist arguing for the moral law of things. Factoring in, you know, something beyond their fictitious, you know, ego tripping science, right? For the dismount. Now, in the practical aspects, when it is understood that the geophysical laws are quite different and that this uh, tipping over of the Earth's axis has occurred often, suddenly in the past, and will occur again. Mm. If and these things be flipping. And they're right next to each other, like magnets. Let's go. The new view is elaborated, and I will not live long enough anymore to do that. It will be understood that the speed of light is not a universal constant, as it is now the foundation of science, that it's changeable. And that perhaps 50 years before the next change of axis, there will be an increase in the speed of light. And if scientists will work out why and how, then there will be sufficient warning that mankind can prepare itself. Instead of building... Atom bomb shelters and hydrogen bombs by the millions. Mm. We will build provisions of uh, making humanity floatable and to survive uh, this crisis. So <laughs> wow. So if the speed of light increases, technology should be going high tech, high tech, huh? And what does it mean for the melanated knock? Keeping the cold. Comes again to the age old concept that truth is the guidance, the hope, and the directive of the human mind and that man must strive to understand and to know the real nature of the world. <sighs> Dropping plasma bombs on these cats, man, 1965, you know? Hey, this is on ABC News. This is Dr. R. Foster or Robert Foster. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, we, we still popping off in the drop, drop, chatter, chat, 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 chat. I told y'all, man. <laughs> oh, no. Templar, you know, you know what I mean? Templar, man, when he gets cozy, you know, you, you, you're going to have to get off your feet, man. You're going to have to stretch your ankle bones, you know, when a Templar <laughs> pops off, it's all happening. When the poetry flow be popping off through the Shabbat show, a Templar wrote a poem called Naga Seeds, man. We're going to make sure we drop that right here on the site. We dropped it in the drop chat before. We got to get it again, man. Naga Seeds, man. Love to the Templar. Allow what? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So we got a couple of things. We got this scientist drop. Love to my, my bro, Star Prince. He's been trying to get me on this, uh, this uh, you know, researcher here named. Uh, let me just click this one. Let's see what this is. That's an article drop. Oh, the moon is a reflection. Okay, see, I mean, is the moon a reflection? Is the moon a reflection? He's popping off, you know. Let's get a couple little small drops from. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> All right, G. Hi, guys. This hey, is man, What it do? What it do? What it do? Uh, how do you say his name? Man? You, you see it, man. I can't, I can't pronounce it, man. But I know he does great work. And uh, a lot of a lot of folks is enjoying his work, and he's right on point, right? Is the moon a reflection of a gigantic Earth? God's vlamst. I appreciate you, Star Prince. We on it, man. We on it. He said it's it's gonna patch in a lot of gaps. You know what I'm saying? As we are as, asking a lot of questions. <laughs> this is about four minutes. You know what I'm saying? Let's fall back. We enjoying the Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Hi guys, this is Wim from Belgium. You know, after listening to several theories about the flat earth and the spherical theory, I thought, well, they are both right, but how can we combine them? And then one day I had an idea, a possible solution. I'm not saying it's true or not true, 
but it's a possible solution. It's a very simple one, but at the same time very, very scary. Listen up. Okay, we are going to start with the spherical theory. So, it's simple. We take a ball and we call it Earth. Hey. We surround this. Already, you gotta love it, right? <laughs> you gotta love it. He's, I'm gonna combine both theories. So, hey, let him pop off. As long as he's researching and he's saying that he's doing some investigation, that's all good. You know, we know Thoth, you know, is the master of duplicity, you know, so there has to be, you know, babies in the bathwater. You gotta be able to com combine both of those. So, let's see how he combines the globe theory with the traditional flat earth recon let's go this ball with another ball and we call it the plasma belt then we mm. take the sun and we let it shine on the earth the earth is giving a reflection on the plasma belt and on the plasma belt we see our own reflection the reflection is surprise the moon what do you mean the moon is the reflection of Earth. What do you mean? Where are all the rivers and the forests? Yeah, but let's suggest that Earth is a thousand times bigger than we are told. Uh -oh. Then the moon is a reflection of a gigantic big Earth. So, let's move over to the flat Earth. It's simple. We take the flat Earth and we zoom in into the moon and then we see all those circles the so-called asteroids impacts well let's suggest that one of those asteroids impacts is a flat earth that would mean that we are surrounded Whoa. by other biosystems <laughs> so the star prince got the dry Hey, man, I appreciate you sending me this drop. You see what it takes? Drop Nation, Aqua Charmaine got to be kicking in. Cootie Mayo over there firing off, man. <laughs> Slicing and dicing, man. And, I mean, look at what's happening. Templar up in there, man, popping off. Man. All right, man. I say, hey, love tonight. Spiral, you over there popping off. Yo, Seth, let's go. Five Eyes Ma dropping that flow. It's all happening. Natural by law. Here we go. Here we go. Go see Jay Battle. He back. Whew. It takes a village to raise a frequency. Oh, shit. I got to write that down. Got to write that down. My bad, y'all. You know, drive just be popping off sometimes. And I'm glad I got a brand new notebook. You know what I'm saying? That I can just kind of pull out and write things down like uh, we just did. <laughs> Y'all like, drop. You, you really, I gotta write this down, man. I love that right there, man. It takes a village to raise a frequency. Or vibration. Ooh. Ooh. Drop slogans are popping off around here. And now it takes a village to raise a frequency. It took, it took a lot to get here. This is Drop Nation. All right? This ain't Con Drop Nation. <laughs> this is a nation of Nagas that got that water. You dig? This is a collective. This is a big thinking, uh, what they call it, a think tank, a big old think tank. <laughs> We put our thoughts together, but we have to dodge thought to do it. Con, con. The duplicity that he's doing is reversing that spell. You know, he's taking them and it appears that he's putting, you know, some key things together, man. So, all right, you got that. <laughs> I mean, all right, uh, let's see where he got that little earth. Right, right quick, right quick. Let's go back in the drop chatter box where it's clearly popping off with the Templar. <laughs> Templar crazy, man. We got a lot popping. I mean, hold on, man. Let's, 
Let, let's see what's happening on a drop radio. That Templar's going crazy over me. Deuces. We're going to enjoy some great production and read a little of the journey of Coronado, 1540. 1542 introduction by Donald C. Cutter, translated and edited by George Parker Freedom. Winship. Shout out to Freedom, man. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Freedom got the drop. Say go, Coronado. Look like I hit the lotto. Oh, there you go. Uh-huh. They got the joke. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, well, maybe start freestyling facts. Freestyling you know, facts. You know I where do this, right? Go? See, some of them still don't know. Where did it go? Hey, where the facts go, man? Yeah, so clearly it's popping off uh, over here. Live at 432 The Drop Radio. We are reading Coronado Expeditions and... I got some drop, you know. I got to catch YouTube up, man. We we've been re- we did a lot of reading this week. Uh, some more Kalelus. Uh, we got a lot of stuff coming up that I got to drop right here for YouTube, you know. But y'all need to be over there, man. But soon we're gonna have all the archives up. I just talked to my IT Naga today, Akmar Kell, what it do, and it's looking good. It's looking great, and uh, man, just be excited for the new look for the website. The app will follow. Oh, man, so much will follow. So it's all happening. It's all happening, man. But we just talking about the rings and things, right? Biblical astronomy maps. You see how this is kind of flipped, right? Is it north or is it south, my naga? I mean, who would look at this map and say this is South America, right? All perspective. Now, as he puts Earth, <laughs> you know, on the moon, He's putting this ring right here on it. And then he's saying, well, that crater could be another ring and that crater, you know what I'm saying? So when you see more land and, you know, you, these these could all be craters, these, these, different earth ponds, different worlds. You know, this could be one. It could be another one with multiple rings with, you know, at this point, you're just asking questions. But notice how he just put it inside of this crater so his whole flow is you know this crater earth situation you know like earth is inside of a crater you could look at it like that or you could look at it like you know it's inside of a geothermic pocket you know i'm saying with his own sun lighting the way you know i'm saying so but it's all connected all this recon is heavyweight connectivity connectivity let's give a little more for the dismount Now we understand why Antarctica, the so-called Antarctica, the snow wall, is being militarized. Mm. We are afraid of other biosystems attacking us. It's world, 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 world. How many worlds? I mean, you're talking about the creator, but I think you'll be blown away when you know how much the creator has created. I think you'll be blown away when you see that your framer and, and your shaper never really stops framing and shaping, man. You'll be blown away when Hawa says, I got land just for you. <laughs> Maybe Hawa got land over here, over here, over here, over here. Who knows, man? But I think you've sold yourself short if you thought your creator stopped creating at Genesis, my God. It's like in the series Game of Thrones, where there's a gigantic ice wall protecting us from invading species. So, when you hear another story about aliens <laughs> coming from other star systems, mm-hmm. well, maybe they won't be coming from other star systems. They might be coming from planet Earth. Maybe on one system, you have the humanoid species being dominant. Maybe on the other biosystem, you have the reptoids or the insectoids being the dominant species. And when you and they're just coming over across the pond, man. They're not traveling through outer space, which is why I'm saying the astronauts are bull bullshit, right? Because they ain't flying through no outer space, not when space is water. 
Go look at them early Star Star Trek joints, man. They always go into these little, uh, you know, virtual, you know, type of joints where they're, you know, always somewhere else, right? So they're always like morphing in some some other spot, you know, doing whatever, uh, tele, not you know, whatever t- uh, teleporting. And they got an episode where they're just on a ship called the USS Enterprise, and they all got their ship captain, you know, ship shipmate uniforms on. And they're telling you right to your face that the Enterprise is not flying through outer space. It is on water, on a boat, finding more Nagas, more lands, boldly going where no man has gone before. They are just colonizing Earth, whether it's Little Earth or the vast, bigger Earth like we just got from Admiral Richard Byrd in 1928. When you hear the story of Jules Verne, when people are going to the middle of Earth and they discover a totally new world, maybe there are tunnels here on Earth where you can reach other biosystems. And instead of going to the center of Earth, you are going to uh, another biosystem. So... Why would they not be telling us this all? Well, maybe the elites are thinking, well, our population is not ready for this information. They will panic when they know that we're not alone on this planet. Well, for myself, I would rather hear the truth than being lied to all the time. He keeps saying planet, which is the only thing that we'll pivot off of because we're on a plane. So he's trying to combine the flat earth with the with the ball by saying we're just on a bigger ball. <laughs> but that reflection, you know, just like we're reading now, the world's beyond the poles. There are no spherical balls. These are optical illusions. So why would we assume we're on some ball unless we're saying the universe is like a cosmic egg, right? <laughs> and then you got the whole cosmic egg there. So you got the hollow earth there, cosmic eggs over here traditional flat earth over here and then of course you got the their theories like the theory of gravity (laughs) and gravity is a theory not a law so how can you base science off of a theory it's not a law it's not physics it's not density it's not electromagnetism it's a theory called gravity uh my man uh just took their theory away right (laughs) he said nah man (laughs) all gravitational theories are out anymore 11 years ago, uh, of course, uh, it was rather taking a risk. I was considered a lunatic, of course. But by now, the evidence, accumulated evidence, is already so much in my favor that I'm not taking any risks anymore. On the contrary, uh, there is scientific views expressed all over the world now that uh, the moon seems to be of a quite different nature of what was assumed. But and the, the Americans and Russians are thinking of landing men on it. Uh, well, that will never happen. Not on the moon. On Mars, on Venus, on other planets, yes. But the moon is definitely, as I assert, a plasma. Isn't there a slight contradiction? You mentioned the the moon and the tides, Mr. Foster. And at the earlier part of the interview, you talked about the tides sweeping over the Earth. Well, there is no contradiction there, because once the moon is proven not to be a piece of rock, but something of far less mass, and the gravitational theories are out and discarded, Mm. new concepts have to be involved, which will show that the lawfulness of nature in the cosmos is identical to that in a hydrogen atom or in, uh, in, in atomic processes. And when this is understood and worked out in full, it will be found that the physical processes of the Earth are quite different in geophysics of what it is present assumed, and that lawfully in certain periods, mostly during the ice ages, which occur every 200 million years, and there is a reason for that, the axis of the Earth suddenly tilts over. And when this happens, then you get the floods of the Bible, which were recorded before. Now you got the poles flipping and shifting, but we're not talking no ball flipping. You see what I'm saying? Because all gravitational theories are out. Yeah, man. It's getting real, real, right? back on course i stumbled from yourself he said what do you see and there it was just as it had always been mirror mirror way up high 
Mirror, mirror in the sky. Mirror, mirror, oh how they lie. Open your mind, bone. Now, all right, that's why we're comparing these things. So from the theory that we just got, you know, at the God's Vlamst channel, <laughs> every crater would be like a little earth in each crater. And then all these would be, you know, a bunch of little earths, right? On this particular flow, you kind of have a larger moon map situation. And it's not just the earth fitting into a little crater. But this whole situation seems to be reflecting Earth more at a closer range, which would shake up the other theory a little bit because you don't have necessarily, um, you know, it, it's not that much of a, this moon, this particular reflection is only reflecting a finite particular area. It's not like this whole thing is all you see or it's all that there is. If this is not really no type of sphere or disc, but more of a plasma portal type of thing, this could just be an opening of a, of a reflection. Kind of like it's not really a circle, but it's shining through a circle, right? The moon is not really a circle, but let's say that this plasma, according to the cycles, is shining through these windows or it's peeking through these circular you know, openings, let's say, and what it looks like is a big light circle, but you're just seeing, you know, what's what you're allowed to see through that window. You know what I'm saying? In that case, you're not going to see the entire flat earth plane right through one, you know, window. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just too big. You're not going to see it all. And you can't just assume that it's just the circle plays, you know what I'm saying? Because you're talking plasma. And you're only seeing what you're allowed to see through a window. You're not seeing everything. So to say it's all a bunch of craters and, you know, Earth got to be on all these, this big spherical situation. Nah, you know, you, you're just seeing the reflection through a window. And in this window right here, you see exact replica, inverted replicas of continents. Because the moon is not that far away for it to really reflect all the Earth plane. You know, not if it's only a few thousand miles away like the sun. Both portals are reflecting through windows. Now you get back in the book of Enoch, and that's exactly what Enoch is dropping, that the sun is moving out of portals and, and these windows. The moons and these celestial energies are moving through windows, right? These are all windows, so... We don't know if they're circular, rectangular. We don't know. But now you can factor in this window flow. Because sometimes you see the moon one place in the sky. You come back 30 minutes later. It's way over there. It's like, wait. I, that thing didn't just slowly travel over there. It's way over there. So it's almost like it, now another window opened up and another window closed. And sometimes these windows, you know, maybe look like the phases, you know, of the moon. Sometimes they're halfway open. Sometimes it's just a slit. Sometimes the whole thing is open. We don't know, man. I'm just asking some questions because we surfing the way. Con, con, so where would the craters fit in in this situation, right? You can't just put Earth in one little crater of the moon, right? Because, you know, these craters add up to continents you know what i'm saying all oh, this is large continental space you know from what i can look at such you know so far in these particular theories and investigations but that's all we're doing it's the shabbat i go you know do 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 too much ripping in this you know what i'm saying but we're just looking at it man and when you compare these continents that you're seeing with you know what we're getting let's say here Right. <laughs> I mean, my night, like, you know, look at look at the mass of the moon. Right. So he's made Earth into a tiny crater. Meanwhile, Be back on uh, course.
the moon is literally reflecting actual continents and actual, you know what I'm saying, like the spacing, everything is actual factual, right? <laughs> They're literally mapping out the entire, you know, or at least this 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 part of our known area and then pointing the picture at other areas that are unknown to us. unknown to us, right? They call it Terra Vista. Now, this is not just going to fit into one little crater. <laughs> this seems to be an entire, you know, area, you know what I'm saying? So it's just the the scaling, you know, of both of those theories, you know, are interesting, you know what I'm saying? But you can flow with both of them and see if you can put it together yourself. Would all this stuff fit into one little crater and then all this would fit into another little crater? Well, that would make you feel real small. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, you know, there's a lot of land we know. Or we're we talking about actual factual reflections. That this is the reflection of the known world that we know North, South, America, Africa, all that. And then there's this area about three times this size, at least double, of unknown land. And that would also, you know, fit with a lot of other maps we're looking at. And they're calling that. Tara Vista. But again, we're not just talking about one little crater and all that Tara Vista is supposed to fit what over here in this little crater. You know, I don't know. I don't know. We know it's a, you know, uh, infinite plane, you know, so I'm down with it being a spread out plane. You know, I'm just looking at these sizes and how things really are fitting. And when we talk crater, just remember, man, remember, remember one thing, my not. Let's see here. Let's pull it up over here. When we talk crater, let's go to, uh, should we go etymology? Let's go to etymology, man. What is a crater? I think we've done this uh, at least once before, you know, because as this crater theory starts popping off, we need to know what a crater is, right? Does it have anything to do with the moon? And here's the body bag. Here's the body bag. Oh, that's another part. A car? Ooh, that's another part. Ooh, wait. <laughs> a bowl shaped mouth of a volcano. Yeah, man. So before we talk craters, you're talking volcanoes. And are you saying that all those volcanoes are popping off on the moon? They got all that volcanic energy popping off? <laughs> You know what I mean? Before, you know, they put you in the moon crater, if the moon's a reflection, then yeah, you're talking about yourself living in a, in a, you know, mouth of a volcano, which is now connected to this ring of fire, earth core, molten lava core, all that stuff, right? You just live in a big bowl shaped mouth of a volcano if you're living in a crater, huh? Is that geothermic pocket, not just the sun popping off, but the volcanic activity popping off my night can we put it all together and when we talk car and katai they're getting something about mixing right and that connects to the abyssini or the mixed multitude and we're just talking preston john who's leading a mixed multitude like moshe the car also means black and turkey and Katai is the Katan. We just got that in the drop chatter, right? The Katan is the Cathay. Love the Zion Trey. <laughs> Where's my bro Zion popping off, man? Yeah, man. We're talking cars. We're talking Katai. You take you got Cathay, right? Which you got India Superior, Cateo, which is just the Katan, which connects with the Kara Katan or Kara Katai. 
which pressed the John the Wong Khan. Wong means uh, king, Khan means priest. So this priest king, the great Khan, is leading these Kara Katai, or this mixed multitude, this black mixed multitude, or this melanated mixed multitude who is connected with Cathay. Cathay means a pure land. So these are people connected with the promised land, people connected, melanated Nagas connected with the promised land, with pure land. We're talking great Khan and grand Kanyans, <laughs> grand Kanyans, great Kanjans. And, you know, we're talking craters and volcanoes as well, man. And last one here, man, I love to thoughts, camera, action, always popping off, man. Shalom, shalom. We're going to get this piece for the dismount. We're just talking about plasma moons and volcano craters, man. Reflections. Or we're just talking about more land beyond the pole. And there's also a volcano uh, in the Antarctic. And what I found interesting was the the wording on this newspaper article from The Guardian, I think. Was it The Guardian? I think it was The Guardian. Uh, yeah. Is this The Guardian? Yeah, I think it's The Guardian. I'm not too sure. Yeah, all right, let's just call it. I'm sure it's The Guardian. I don't want to bear false witness, but I'm sure it's The Guardian. All right, so... I like that right there. He said, I don't want to bear false witness. Man, I, I like that, man. My brother's keeping the cold, man. Let's pop off. So did you actually know that Antarctica is a desert? That Antarctica is a desert. So when you go to the definition, it's a region that has little rainfall, supports only sparse, widely spaced vegetation or no vegetation at all. Now, naturally, due to the programming, we're thinking of, yeah, the Sahara Desert and deserts and deserts. Now, a desert means a deserted place, a desert, deserted place. A desert is a barren area of landscape where little precipitation occurs and consequently, living conditions are hostile for plant and animal life. The lack of vegetation exposes the unprotected surface of the ground uh, to the processes of uh, denudation, about one third of the land surface of the world is arid or semi arid. Now, just so you can see the world from a biblical astronomy uh, cosmology perspective, And before people rush off and they want more definitions, I'm going to give more definitions to why it's a desert. So this whole fair. Now, this is a, a rough, a very rough outline of the place that we call home. And we notice that the earth is predominantly more water than it is earth. There's more water than there is earth. So the Antarctica goes all around the Earth. It encircles the Earth, for want of a better word. Now, this is Chile. South America. Look how close it is to Antarctica. This is where Deception Island is run about, run about here somewhere. And then we ask, what's this Deception Island about? And compare this with this Thoth the Moving Island that's supposed to be right outside the wall right there, this monitoring island. Remember, we got that drop. We we got a lot of flat drop to get to, man. We just are popping off, man. And, you know, maybe for the dismount, we're looking to some of them uh, uh, Taurus Sancta, you know what I'm saying, Terra Fuego, that, all that stuff, because... On our maps, all this area in Antarctica is called Terra Fuego. Not just the part in South America, but it's literally Terra Fuego in Antarctica, as well as Tara Zancta. <laughs> now, you research Tara Zancta, S-A-N, 
uh, CTA, and then you got all this holy land situation that they want to put in Israel today, but it's not in Israel, it's in Antarctica. This is South Africa. You have like Madagascar, the penguins of Madagascar. So this is how close they are to Antarctica. Mm -hmm. This is Sydney. Now, Sydney's a hot, it's weird as well, you know, when you just think about it logically. Yeah, South America is kind of hot. When you mm. think of South America, it's a very hot place, mm -hmm. like Brazil, Chile, and whatnot. It's, it's, it's very tropical, it's hot, hot climates, but it's adjacent to the, the South Pole. And then likewise, South Africa is a very hot place. Africa is a very hot place in general. And it's close to a very cold place. Terra Fuego. Give or take. Then if you just think about Sydney or New Zealand, you know there's a, a continent under New Zealand, allegedly, that was sunken. But that's another story for another day. <laughs> but when you look at Sydney and Australia and whatnot, Sydney, Australia is a hot place, man. Kangaroos and didgeridoos and um, koala bears and stuff like that. But it's right next to a cold place. And like I said, Africa, zebras, elephants and stuff like that. And you got the penguins of Madagascar. So it's hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. So it's just interesting. Then right here is the pole or the North Pole. The North Pole. And they say that all compasses point north. Mm. All compasses point north. And I'm not sure if you're you're aware of the, if you've seen the video of the, the ice wall. It's been caught on video, but a lot of the times it gets taken down because it goes against the mainstream narrative. So if you, if you look diligently, you'll find images of the ice wall very high. And if people try to go next to the, this, this area in a ship, uh, yeah, there are entities that will turn them back. <laughs> Many entities. Eh? So this is, you know, Look, is this South America or North, according to your orientation? Unless you know that North is the center and South is everything out, <laughs> then you'll understand why they call this South, right? But it's not South like you're thinking, like beneath you. It's out away from the magnetic center North. And you see North America is closer to that North other research researchers would call this the central pole and that the north and south are both next to each other like we just showed in the previous stratosphere diagram in worlds beyond the pole by f amadio giannini you got north and south next to each other and they would call this the central pole either way you're not on a ball spinning at a thousand miles per hour so if you try to explore this area on a ship or a boat, there's entities that will turn you back. Because they don't want exploration. They want astronauts. Coast guards and stuff like that. If you try to fly, there are jets that are called out purposefully just to intercept people who might try to intrude and go too far this way. And also, the whole world has an agreement called the Antarctic Treaty which is in place by pretty much all the nations to prevent people from going to the Antarctic. These are things you can look up for yourself. And the Antarctic Treaty, incidentally, was introduced in and around the same time that NASA and the, and the moon landing and stuff like that. Mm. So just showing you how hot and cold can be together when you look at it from this perspective. Now we know that the Antarctic encircles the globe. <laughs> Let's read, or not the globe, but you get what I'm trying to say. Let's read this article, because this article made me laugh. It's like they were just uh, mocking the people. So it says, Eruption warning. 
Antarctic volcanoes ash could encircle the globe, sparking health problems. Now, this was in 2000, well, an article from 2017. Scientists warned that an eruption from an from an act uh, from an active volcano in the Antarctic could spark health problems across the world from ash cloud that has the potential to encircle the globe. <laughs> and we have just gotten that a crater <laughs> is the mouth of a volcano and a crater does crater does what? <laughs> Circle and circle stuff, right? Hey man. It's all happening. It's all happening. Cause we're understanding that the moon it's just a reflection. It's just a plasma. One map at a time, Anagas. One map at a time. Whoa, the cold cheese, man. Don't we got some great cold cheese drive, man, in the press the John Rica? Oh boy. Yeah. It's more than meets the eye. When you talk about this moon drop, man. When you talk about this moon drop, man. What they got, Rhodey, like Rhoda? Isle of Lesbos? Okay. Torontinus? Egypticum? They got the river of Egypt. Man, I'm out of here, man. Yo, they got Egypt. I'm out of here, man. <laughs> All right. Sicily, oh, they got Sicily. Oh, man, I'm out of here, man. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, you think they mapped this out in 1647? All these rivers and lakes and mountains on the moon. Or is it a reflection of more, of more, of more worlds beyond a pole? He's talking the moon. We're just talking ether pack. Hey, what else we got in the ether packs, man? Yeah, it's a fun thing to, you know, come together and surf this way and continue to do it, not just once, man, but continue to pop off the way we're doing it. It truly is a beautiful thing. Because we can kick back on a Shabbat and do this, man. This is how easy it is now. We can rest, kick back, and still slice and dice, weaponized <laughs> in our Zanza. Gotta love it, man. Oh, yeah. Nineteen seventy two flat earth drive. Which one were we just in? Go back one. Oh yeah, you even got the time battle poetry drop up in here. Up in here. You got a bunch of drop links that's gonna have everything, everything on there. <laughs> These drop links got thirty seven pages of links, man. Yeah, we out of here, baby. We out of here, baby. Melanated true earth plane. Antarctica, no ice on my number two. Hey, no cap on my number two pencil. No ice on Antarctica's chest bone. No cap on my number two pencil. No ice on Antarctica's chest bone. No cap on my number two pencil. No ice on Antarctica's chest bone. He said how South America be touching Antarctica. Look how it touches. Oh, we got a better one than this. Hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. No cap on my number two pencil. No ice on Antarctica's chest bone. Chile, Chile, Chile. Yeah, it's close to Antarctica. Why is it so hot in Chile, 
in South America and then it's supposed to be cold in Antarctica. I don't think so, my naga. I don't think so. This says Antarctic. Yeah. You see ice over here or is there no cap on Antarctica's chest ball? It looks like people popping off regular style, right? So when did this ice thing happen? Dragons in the water. Everything's good. <laughs> When did this ice situation happen? This is in the 1500s right here. You got 1600s maps, 1500s maps. You got scholars, reconners. Man, we, we just featured the best of the scientists, the chronographers, man, the, the cartographer map makers, man. <laughs> you got Dr. Foster telling you that the moon is a plasma. You got uh, God's Vlanst breaking it down with the crater flow, connecting it with the reflection flow. Man, you got the you got the homie uh, Broadway Mac. Back on course. <laughs> He's back on course, letting you know exactly what it's looking like around here, man. <laughs> you did. Is the moon a plasma? Well, we got maps on maps on maps. You know, kicking it in the drop pack man in the ether man so man you know just enjoy because we can do this all day long beautiful south america beautiful south america man No cap on Antarctica's chest bone. Uh oh. Right. No cap on Antarctica's chest bone. It's Diego Gutierrez, fifteen sixty two map. So you telling me in the 1500s there's no cap on an Arca's chest bone, the same place that's supposed to encircle us, right? So it's not just ice, man. So the more we think, oh, it's just ice and ice, and then you got an earth, and ice, and then you got another earth, man. There's more to it than that. Even that ice, it's not just all ice. <laughs> it's more world. It's just more. You know what I mean? <laughs> you got to accept this, man. It's just more. Earth, more land beyond a pole. What does it say there? This is Chile. Connected to this Antarctica. Instead it says Terra de Fuego. So this Terra de Fuego ain't even in South America. It's down here in Antarctica. Let's see if I got a bigger one. Fuego. Oh, man, this is the Mercator 1607. And down here, instead of it called Antarctica, what's it called? Australia's. <laughs> so before Australia was that little continent over there, it was just Antarctica. Australia just means southerly. Southerly. And what do you see here? Terra de Fuego. It's not South America Fuego. They moved it up there <laughs> like it's the only Terra de Fuego. It's fuego down here, which means how could it be ice on Antarctica's chest bone? 
There's a lot we don't know, my noggin. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> There's a lot we need to know. There's a lot we need to see. We're just talking maps, map projections. What's really popping, man? What about this Abraham Artilius in 1570? Chile, and again, you see this piece that South America is connected to down here with no ice. No ice. And of course, you got the Perry Reese map, the infamous Perry Reese map. Again, no ice. No ice on Antarctica's chest bone. Just Nagas popping off, lighting fires, and doing stuff, right? <sighs> Things that make you go. <laughs> as we keep popping off, man. There's a lot more to meets the eye when it comes to this moon business. Reflection, plasma, what is Antarctica? When did the ice supposedly freeze over? After 1800s, maybe, sometime recently. The world looks like a much different place. And this is the place to be. Popping off with the Templar and me and Zion. <laughs> and Abiyah and Charmaine, my Aquas and Aquata, you know she up in here. Carameo up in here, what it do? We popping off, man. Would you say Templar? You know, Templar getting <laughs> his turn up time. It's Abba's original Amarakan, Aboriginal Amarakan. This is us, man. It's turn up season. It's turn up time. Oh, Templars getting mappy. Quivera. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Quivera is just Hebera or Eber. Eber. Heber. Heberu. Keberu. Kivera. Those Qs become Ks. K H E E V I R A. Go dig on it, man. To this drop, uh, this drop nation. Keep the water flowing. <laughs> Keep that mem sauce flowing, man. Allow why uh, I'm just, you know, chiming in on my restful Shabbat here. Y'all keep enjoying your Zan Zan. Continue to surf the wave and keep the water flowing. That mem sauce flowing. Love to yourself and love, of course, to the Templar. Allow a why.